Commission with Jacqueline Busitwa. She's a leading expert on international trade law. She founded a boutique law firm called Hoja Law Group, which operates in New York and Kigali, Rwanda. She's also served as an advisor to the Director General of the WTO, the World Trade Organization, as well as an advisor to the Rwandan Minister of Trade, Investment and Infrastructure. Today we're going to have a conversation with her on international trade law and how that favors African countries and what we can do to improve those. Thank you once again and welcome to the conversation. So thank you very much for being with us today. Thank okay. you for having me. Um, so I love, I love reading about your background and reading your bio and you do a lot of work on international trade. So do you think African countries are getting the short end of the stick in terms of trade with other countries? I think it's a complex question, and I say that for several reasons. A majority of African countries are members of the World Trade Organization. Mm -hmm. And so when they did sign up to be a member, they realized certain benefits of joining this global body. Now, having said that, a lot of countries joined at very early stages um, of the WTO, and I'm not sure if all of them are necessarily taking advantage of all the benefits that the World Trade Organization has to offer. So now you have a situation where countries like Ethiopia are not yet members, and in their defense they're saying we are not joining to a point until we can get our local industries, particularly in the financial services mm. sector as well as telecommunications to a sufficiently advanced level mm -hmm. before we feel we are ready for foreign competition. Ethiopia analyzed the rest of the continent and said some of the problems that other countries are facing yeah. are that yeah. there was too much foreign competition way too early and local industries never really had the opportunity to develop. So what does that mean overall for trade in Africa? We need to sit down and re-strategize our trade policies not only to be in line with how the WTO can help, mm -hmm. but also to be in line with current realities. And I think that the problem is, at the time that a lot of trade policies were being written, they weren't really being written for a 2014 type of Africa and looking forward to a 2020 or a 2030 type of Africa. Now, a lot of countries are now sitting down and coming up with a variety of visions. So in Rwanda, there's Vision 2020. In Kenya, there's Vision 2030, and all of these are now kind of mm -hmm. analyzing where does trade fall in that, and how can we best maximize what we have locally. Part of that is what products do we produce? Mm -hmm. How do we need to diversify? How can we really become strong global players locally within mm -hmm. our different regions, but also globally? Now, the unfortunate part in which I can see why people would say Africa is getting the short end of the stick is we traded typically with our colonial past, right? right. It was mostly trading north. Mm -hmm. it, former British colonies typically would trade with the UK. Absolutely. Now, as America's influence grew and a lot of benefits were perceived to come from America, either through AGOA or generally through foreign direct investment, there's also been a lot of trade in the past with the US great in many ways however at the beginning of the trade conversation what do we provide we provide raw materials these raw materials are then sent abroad and value add takes place abroad and therefore most of the money is made abroad so is africa getting the short end of the stick yes because we are not manufacturing final goods and in that regard i think that we the onus is on us to really change yeah. our manufacturing processes, not to send raw cocoa or raw coffee, but to say we will go ahead and produce locally and we will export to you these final products. Then Africa won't be getting the short end of the stick. Now, that's one aspect. Mm -hmm. The other aspect is negotiation of agreements, of course. And on that front, it becomes very, very difficult because there definitely is a capacity deficit. Exactly. Now, governments obviously do have ministries of trade, ministries of commerce, whatever they are called in the respective countries. But oftentimes, the teams negotiating are small mm -hmm. and they're also not necessarily specialized yeah. in trade. Mm -hmm. How can you change that? I think that there's a lot of training globally. 
that lawyers do need to get. It can be expensive, but there also are programs where lawyers can get additional training. And the World Trade Organization and other organizations in Geneva, for instance, do focus on trade law and do provide training for lawyers from developing countries across the world. So I do think that there are opportunities to increase capacity. Whether we do it fast enough is something that I think might be a problem. Yeah. Um, and two, whether we have enough to take care of the changing nature of trade and the changing realities of trade at the moment, I think is yet to be determined. Okay, thank you. Okay.